Welcome and thank you for joining us for this webinar presentation. We are the Cybersecurity and Information Systems Information Analysis Center, or CSIAC, one of three IAC domains in the DoD Information Analysis Centers operating under the Defense Technical Information Center, DTIC, within the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. Our informative webinar series highlights current and emerging research and technology developments. It presents an opportunity for accelerating the DOD's leverage of these advancements by increasing awareness and fostering technical collaboration. CSIX serves as one of the premier information research partners and curators of technology advancements and trends for the cybersecurity and information systems community. As such, our organization supports those working in the cybersecurity and information systems domain of DOD research and engineering. We do so by helping navigate the vast landscape of scientific and technical information, allowing our customers to get a head start on their technical projects. With an understanding of the cybersecurity and information systems DOD research and engineering landscape, we provide research and analysis services. We help unlock access to information, knowledge, and best practices from government, industry, and academia to stimulate innovation, foster collaboration, and eliminate redundancy. We hope you enjoy this webinar presentation and that it serves as a catalyst for community collaboration and improved DoD cybersecurity and information systems research. Good day, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, we apologize for the slight delay. My name is Philip Payne. I am the technical lead for the Cybersecurity and Information Systems Information Analysis Center, also known as CSIAC. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to know a couple of administrative items. First, if you are dialed in by phone and would like a copy of the slides, they were posted to the CSIAC webinar announcement. Uh, you can go to csiac.org forward slash webinars and find today's webinar. When you click on it at the bottom of the announcement, it will say download presentation. Second, all participants are muted, but feel free to chat using the attendee chat window on the lower right hand side of the screen. You can use that to chat with each other and I'll be monitoring that chat as well. However, if you'd like to pose a question for the Q&A session at the end, uh, please use the Q&A window, which is at the bottom right of your layout. At the end of the presentation, I will go over the Q&A for the benefit of those on the phone. I'll read the questions out loud to the presenter. Uh, if you have any technical issues during the presentation, please have no fear. The full presentation will be available online. Please check back to the CSI website. Uh, once the webinar is posted, the GoToWebinar button will take you to the YouTube link. Um, with that said, I would like to now introduce uh, today's webinar presenter. Farad Patel is the product lead for Project Lynchpin, the U.S. Army's strategy to decouple artificial intelligence from software through a standards-based approach and design principles. With that said, Barrett, we can now get started. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks for the intro. Um, looking forward to this topic. Uh, Project Lynchpin is definitely near and dear to my heart, um, and, and I want to be able to communicate where we are within a, a program executive office, um, our strategy for AI, uh, delivering trusted AI, as well as where we think the Army is going um, and how the two are going to uh, interact. So one, again, apologize um, for being late. I made a mad dash out of, uh, out of the Pentagon and uh, ran through the, the underground uh, tunnel across the street and uh, ran up to the fifth floor to make sure I had good reception. Um, so again, I, I apologize for um, being a little tardy, but uh, appreciate the opportunity to kind of give this uh, overview to our, our teammates and our extended uh, family in the, the DOD. All right, so um, Project Linspin, I'll, I'll cover a few charts. You can jump to the next chart. Uh, but um, from concept to program, really 12 months um, happened really fast. Couldn't happen with a lot of the folks that you see on this chart. Um, so we are a program. Um, I am in the software uh, pathway of the adaptive acquisition framework. So out of all of the services, we, we have uh, the first um, AI-focused uh, program to deliver AI, and again, uh, would not have happened uh, this fast without a lot of folks on uh, on this chart. So, um, all the way from uh, the, uh, the top, uh, Honorable Douglas Bush, who signed my acquisition decision memorandum uh, to enter into the software pathway, but 
to his principal deputy. So if you go down uh, to the first row to the right, Mr. Young Bang, principal deputy, um, I was just meeting with him to discuss our AI layered defense uh, strategy, um, hashtag uh, uh, defend AI. So those are uh, some new terms that are going to be coming out in the next step, uh, really two weeks. Uh, to really capture how we want to deliver AI and wrap a layer of security around around it, and I'll get over, I'll, I'll get after some of um, some of those uh, topics here in this uh, briefing. So, if you look to this chart again, organizational structure of um, how we're kind of uh, organized. So, this is our ASALT. This is senior leadership. ASALT's really the assistant secretary of the Army for acquisition, logistics, and technology. So this organization and organizational structure has all the right authorities to provide enduring capabilities to the warfighters. And one of those programs that, that's being set up is Project Lynchpin, um, which is going to uh, be that enabling infrastructure, standards, governance, process, and, and services to uh, apply AI uh, across uh, various uh, uh, use cases. So kind of if you go down to down this chart to the left, those are all what we call DASAs, so they're de deputy assistant uh, secretaries for things for contracting, engineering, uh, all part of cost, all part of the, the process. The right side really is uh, your program executive offices from um, in charge of um, uh, anything from beams to bullets to radios to, um, uh, to uh, intelligence, uh, aircraft survivability. Um, where I fall under right now is under General Barker Program Executive Office, Intelligence, Electronic Warfare, and Sensors, uh, uh, located out of Aberdeen Proving Grounds. Um, and under there, um, Colonel Chris Anderson, my 06 um, boss, who manages a um, broad portfolio of intelligence uh, products. And, and I'll, I'll just talk to you about some of those um, in the next chart, but we could uh, move on. All right, so, so this portfolio, why did we start with um, AI in this portfolio? So um, intelligence, electronic warfare, and sensors, very broad. We are the sensing PEO for the Army, uh, all from all things from aircraft survivability equipment, um, RF being um, detected from cyber to uh, uh, space, uh, terrestrial cyber, um, offensive, defensive cyber, uh, we have the, the gamut from force protection, base protection, um, aerial intelligence, new new exquisite sensor coming. Uh, and then, of course, we have a, a, the ground station flagship program called Titan, the tactical intelligence targeting access node. Uh, so collects all that data. Uh, so AI being ripe for the ability to be able to sense detect things in the spectrum, whether it's imagery or RF or, or cyber, uh, we are um, – uh, prime uh, to apply AI techniques, whether it's computer vision or natural language processing or generative AI. Uh, we, we manage the sensors, we manage the data. So applying AI uh, across this portfolio is uh, project management's uh, priority. So again, one of our one of the business cases for uh, standing up project Winston is really when you when you peel everything back. Every AI project um, requires the same um, similar concept. You need you need standards. You need you need governance. You need process. You need uh, tools. You need a place to put the data. You need a you need a place to onboard tools to apply, apply AI techniques to it. Um, you need compute. So all of these are um, really foundational um, capabilities and needs for any AI project. And when you look across uh, the, the PEO portfolio, uh, the idea was each one of these programs and, and, and 06 level PMs uh, probably is unaffordable for everyone to be able to stand up their own infrastructure, their own compute. Uh, you need training, you need compute for training, you need uh, compute for inference. Um, it'd be very expensive. Not, all, not only that, there's um, uh, standards for data, standards for ontology, standards for labeling, standards for T&E. Uh, each one, we didn't want to go after uh, different uh, types of standards. So, again, Project Lynchpin is um, a central uh, program office with AI skilled uh, personnel on the government side, 
as well as um, uh, the management of standards uh, to apply AI um, affordably and effectively, uh, meaning a lot of the, the use cases uh, across the, the PDO. All right, we could um, jump to the next chart. All right, uh, operational view can't go anywhere in uh, our DOD community without having an operational view, but you'll see a lot of our systems, um, tactical systems in the fight, um, and collecting data, trying to identify things, um, updating the common intelligence picture, updating mission command, informing. Um, so a lot of things happening, a lot of data happening. Our goal is to be able to uh, apply AI and analytics at the point of data collection. So being able to drop um, models inside of those platforms, and those platforms vary from uh, computing hardware computing environments, one GPU to two GPUs to five GPUs. So they're all different. Um, so within our, our pipeline and our concept, we are looking for um, we are looking for ways to optimize uh, models and model deployment to support various hardware com uh, computing environments. Uh, so those are some of the services that are going to be within our, our pipeline. And of course, you'll see at the bottom, you'll see the type of techniques that uh, all kind of apply to the different types of data sets that we have available um, now and uh, are collecting as we move forward. All right, uh, we could um, jump to the next chart. All right, so where are we? So Project Winston, so we are standing up right now the program itself. So a lot of good things happening. The Army's made a decision on uh, moving moving this fast. Um, so organizational structure, uh, we are standing up uh, an O5 uh, product shop. So we've hired a couple of core government civilians. We're matrixing a, a, a few from across the Army SEC community, so great partnerships with the C5 uh, community as well as Army Research Lab. Uh, we've brought on our um, Army's AI Integration Center under AFC. Uh, they're all part of the team. Um, so again, wrapping an organizational structure around being able to deliver uh, AI uh, to the various programs. We're working through our governance process because each um, and, and governance and just regular processes um, we're working through the different type of, with our ASALT uh, headquarters and Army CIO, uh, the various AI policies, uh, regulations, and guidance that we're going to need to have in place if we really want to implement, uh, if we want to get out of the experiment experimentation phase and really start implementing AI into operations. Um, there's definitely things from a policy, regulation, and guidance perspective we just got to uh, start getting after, and again, those are things that are happening right now in the in the planning phase. Uh, from a DoD IT partnership, we're all trying to do the same thing. Uh, we can't all um, uh, do the same thing; it's just unaffordable. So we're looking for where uh, where, where it makes sense to partner. So we've got strong partnerships with um, the National Geospatial Agency, the National Security Agency, um, the National Reconnaissance uh, Organization and several other IC and DOD. One of our biggest partners um, is at the OSC level, the Chief Data and AI Office. And so we are one of their uh, premier premier partners, uh, actually leveraging a lot of the services that they provide. Um, so a little background, so CDAO stands up a couple of years ago now, uh, but it was formed really from the JAPE, um, the Defense Digital Services, and a couple of other uh, organizations at the OSC level, as they collapsed into creating CDAO, um, they were they were charged with providing a service back out to the DoD for AI. Uh, at the same time, we we're uh, standing up Project Winchpin. Uh, we we knew we couldn't do this without our OSC partners and, and CDAO. Uh, we walked in and said, "Hey, we're standing up a program. You guys are standing up your your services." Uh, I think. Uh, we need to start figuring out ways to partner and then prototype and then inform the larger DOD AI strategy. And that's exactly where we're at right now, where we are leveraging the OSD CDAO labeling service to get Army data labeled, secured, um, according to the ontology we want, and hosted in my secure 
trusted environment, which um, they've helped me stand up. So I have an operational ML app pipeline on IL5 CUI uh, up and running now. Um, it's being used for a couple of customers, but we're growing it, making it, uh, making some improvements. But again, um, that data is now securely managed by the government. It's not handed out to industry partners, but we invite industry and academia into our environment. We manage different enclaves. We give them access to data. We see what they can and cannot do, and then we figure out how those techniques get applied to um, operational and or experimentation kind of purposes. So as we move forward, we're trying to stand up our IL-6 environment as well as uh, our JLIX environment for uh, customers that um, need, uh, need access to those um, pilots and prototyping. We are actively working with our operational community and our Army modernization programs across, um, across our PEO and a few, few other uh, really high priority programs across the Army. So for us, um, Titan uh, being one of our flagship programs, um, it's a ground station, next generation ground station that ingests space aerial terrestrial data, tries to uh, identify um, things within the um, things within that uh, spectrum, uh, either up uh, sends call for fires or updates the common intelligence picture, but it needs to be able to uh, do something with that data relatively quickly. So we're going to be doing some piloting with them. Um, we've already started doing some piloting with them, but as we move into 25, we're going to uh, do some additional additional work. Uh, we're also working with uh, XM30 under uh, PEO GCS, ground combat system. So think of a, a six-man, six-person uh, platform uh, going down to a two-person platform. Uh, semi-autonomous, uh, alone and unafraid out there, um, doing uh, great things for the Army. So a lot of um, uh, capability from an AI and autonomy perspective that's going to be dropped in. So we're working through uh, what partnerships look like um, as we uh, as we move move on. And then from um, uh, we're working with our electronic warfare and cyber um, PM to scope out some capabilities uh, in, in FY24, remaining of FY24 uh, and, and into 25. So those really being uh, more uh, electronic warfare, um, RF uh, related versus your traditional um, kind of cyber defense um, and, and offensive uh, cyber, which kind of bleeds into the electronic warfare and RF um, capabilities. Uh, and then uh, we're trying to maximize our, our SBIR, uh, Small Business Innovative Research, uh, pot of money. Uh, so there's um, a, a lot of good things happening there. We're releasing topics uh, related to uh, test and evaluation, uh, verification validation, uh, because those are some key concepts that we have to get right in order for us, to, again, to scale AI and implement AI. If we don't, um, it's very difficult for us to even test software, but now uh, we are testing, trying to uh, grapple our, our heads around testing undeterministic uh, capabilities that always don't uh, provide the same uh, output. So we're working through um, those uh, concepts now and uh, with our Army test and evaluation community, in addition to um, starting to work with our DOT and E uh, partners at the um, OSB to, again, get after testing AI. Another key concept, which I was meeting with um, the principal deputy, uh, Mr. Youngbang, today about is the AI layer defense framework. So, again, that's, um, you know, generative AI kind of changed the game. Um, computer vision, kind of well-known space. We, we understand some of the risks, but even then, um, making sure that we are leveraging uh, good open source models, um, good open source data to jumpstart the projects and those things get retrained. Um, we need to understand, are we bringing in any biases? But now with generative AI and large language models, there's even uh, more implications of bias data, possible uh, poison data uh, uh, within that um, within that original training data set. So again, uh, how much risk and tolerance are, are we uh, are we um, uh, trying to 
understand before we implement into weapon systems, into business systems, into um, logistics systems. So all of these will have different uh, types of controls and approaches. And again, one of our goals is not to make it as um, cumbersome as the risk management framework. This is a, a different way of looking at how to implement AI uh, through the lens of a, a layered defense uh, a framework that again won't be as um, uh, paperwork intensive as the, the risk management framework and all the controls, but uh, just being able to understand what this looks like across the enterprise uh, is, is something that we're working with our ASALT uh, DASA desk team uh, as part of the ASALT 100 day, 500 day implementation strategy. And uh, Torque, all right, torque, very, very important. Torque, design principles, so traceability, observability, orchestration, replaceability, automated consumption. Those are design principles that uh, we came up with in the last uh, 12 months or so. Uh, that is, uh, again, uh, our approach to make the machine learning AI pipeline uh, more modular, more standard, and also wrap a layer of uh, the uh, security around it to make sure that we can continue leveraging industry best of breed, industry technologies, um, the next um, best thing coming out of the science technology community. So again, very, very important uh, concept that we're uh, kind of working through. All right, we can um, jump through the next, jump to the next chart. All right, so again, Project Linchpin, um, it is uh, Army's uh, uh, program under Program Executive Office Intelligence Electronic Warfare. Um, we are uh, focused on um, that portfolio, and then uh, the Army is trying to make a decision on how it scales from, from there as uh, we work through our FY25 strategy. If you look at our mission, uh, vision and mission, really trusted AI is what we want to provide. Trusted means a lot of different things to a lot of different folks. Um, means different things to a cyber person. Means different things to an operational analyst. Means different things to a program manager. So those are all concepts that um, we are kind of working through now as we um, uh, move forward. Uh, mission, like I mentioned, standards, process, governance, all things that uh, we're getting after. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, we don't want to control the world. So our goal is uh, to be able to have decentralized architecture as, as much as possible. That just means that the Army and the PMs and the PEOs have made investments. Um, how do we maximize their current investments and then uh, scale in, use those to scale across our strategy? And then, again, one of our most important parts of this whole thing is a collaborative, the competitive ecosystem of industry partners. I think I got a chart in here that, that shows um, some of the market research that we've done already. We have so many industry partners and, and companies and academics that are working in this space. Our goal is to be able to leverage all of them. Um, and, and by doing so, what we do on our end, we really manage the, the process standards and governance. We manage Army data. We, we make sure that um, uh, we, we secure it. And then we bring on industry best of breed and or academic approaches to uh, against our data. But again, our data uh, stays with us uh, versus um, going out to industry partners to, to resell. The team kind of mentioned some of those uh, key, key players across the team and the Army organizations all coming together to stand up Project Winston. And then, of course, we have those enabling organizations that I, that I mentioned that are all part of uh, – Stand up a project Lynchman. All right, we could. Um, I see a bunch of questions in the chart. I mean, in the in the chat, I will try and hit them all as time allows. But I'll, I'll run through these um, charts as fast as I can. Okay. So the market research. So we've uh, dropped four request for information at this point. So this is since November of 2022. We've dropped four RFIs. We've uh, met with hundreds of companies, uh, 289 um, individual companies. So uh, that's a, a tremendous amount. And then we've already had uh, over 200 and, um, 
uh, about, I'm sorry, about over 500 different data points across those RFIs and industries. Uh, that really shows that um, industry has the problem. What they don't have is our data. They have the tools, they have the expertise, they have uh, the knowledge to get this done. Um, so our goal is to be able to just manage our data and, and get these companies into our process uh, as, as, uh, as fast as possible. And some of those metrics you'll see uh, over 60% small businesses, over 60% uh, non-traditionals. And that's our goal is to be able to again, tap into that, um, that ecosystem moving forward. All right, we could um, jump to the next chart. I'll spend a few minutes on this chart, but um, so I'll start by day in the life of Project Winston. So we have customers and we have users. So the customers and users are, are towards uh, the right side of the box. So they all have um, uh, customers or uh, program managers or PEOs. Um, users are the users of those operational systems um, and modernization programs. So you need both of them to kind of tease out your AI need, and half the time, uh, our goal is to make sure you actually have an AI need because there's still a lot you could do with software. There's still a lot you could do with other uh, other types of things, and sometimes it's not even a AI problem. Um, it turns out there's a training issue or, you know, or a hardware issue. So, again, before we apply AI uh, to a problem, we just want to make sure that uh, it is an AI problem. So, at, through the consulting process, we help users and customers ensure that they actually have a problem. And then our goal is to get them to, to the folks all the way to the left side, the model training box. So always key is that there's a cop and dot vendor out there that can do anything that you want. But again, what, what they don't have is our data. What they don't have is access to our data. Um, and that's everything in the middle. So that's what's currently missing. That's kind of Project Winston. It's a secure, trusted, uh, government-owned environment, so that's infrastructure, that's compute, that's um, on on uh, green, red, and yellow, so that's unclass, um, secret, and, and JWIC. So we, we manage that environment. Uh, we uh, work with our customers and, um, and our users on that AI uh, use case. Um, we are not trying to get all of the data. Um, you guys know um, AI is very... Uh, use case dependent, and sometimes it's only a partial 10% or 15% of the data that's actually relevant to the AI use case. So, um, and that's a lot of the, the boring parts of AI that you have to just go figure out what's the right data. Do we, how do we get that data in the right format? All that happens within our uh, trusted environment as part of steps um, kind of two and three. Um, and then uh, our goal is to have a model training environment. I didn't, I didn't mention model training tools. Um, our goal is to be flexible, to bring on a um, variety of tools desired by the model trainer itself. It could be uh, tool X today, it could be tool Y. So, again, our goal is not to dictate any tools, but manage data and then provide uh, a subset of that data for training. And then, of course, there's the holdout uh, training data set that uh, uh, we'll also have. Uh, you'll see the uh, verification and validation. Uh, our goal is, uh, again, to get a little bit more robust than performance uh, training. So F1 scores are cool, but what happens, um, how do we start implementing um, more advanced concepts like adversarial AI? And that just means we have to be cognizant of what's happening today in real-world operations. We see things are, are changing. Um, things are uh, being spoofed. So as those things are being spoofed in operational environments, how can we replicate those in a T&E environment so then we could just understand what our model model can, um, how the model would perform in real world. So bringing in some of those concepts and just being aware of what's happening across our theaters and what could happen are um, just areas where we want to be able to implement inside. And then, of course, our goal is to be able to deploy these models. Um, our goal is to have a model marketplace. So think of a uh, hugging face, a um, hugging face for the DOD, so for the Army. I'm going to have a model marketplace um, that has the stamp of trusted models that will be able to be uh, downloaded into one of these um, customer 
environment for, for deployment. And then our, our goal is to be able to capture feedback from the model because we know the model is not going to be performant uh, immediately. So we're going to need to have the appropriate model monitoring in place as well as uh, drift and, and, and feedback so we can quickly rinse and repeat. Um, chart, uh, chart is a, shows a pretty linear um, kind of process, but uh, you can enter at various different com uh, points uh, across this pipeline. And um, it is uh, always not as uh, easy as the picture kind of uh, dictates or relays. Some other concepts um, that I just want to put forth here. So like we did way back when, we separated software from hardware. Um, even though AI is software, our goal is to separate software from AI, uh, really allowing us um, to tap into that AI ecosystem that, you know, the, the companies want to uh, build AI. They don't want to necessarily build an end-to-end -end software stack. So they want to build an analytic or an AI that drops into a software stack. So we're working with our customers that own the software stack on contractual language that allows us to integrate third-party applications. Um, and then uh, being able to uh, really uh, decouple that and have a different uh, process and approach uh, to tap into that AI community of uh, non-traditional small businesses, uh, but leverage large businesses to really uh, help us scale um, and do the um, tender feeding care of some of these companies as we move them into production. Another uh, point I'll make on this chart, really, so the black dots, um, that is where we are really focused on. So consider these big boxes, so data holding, data labeling, model training, those, those are all functions um, that are just kind of required, um, verification, validation. Um, those are all functions that are required across uh, the pipeline, as well as um, we need one on green, red, and yellow. Uh, our goal is not to, again, have tools, but... Uh, own the inputs and outputs, just like what we're doing today with our data labeling service with CDAO. We don't own a tool. We don't own um, any of the people. We, we have a requirement. We send it uh, to CDAO. We say we want um, this X amount terabytes of data being labeled in this format with this ontology, um, so then it's consumable by other parts of our pipeline. Uh, so then they just... Uh, provide that back to us and we have it hosted in our environment for, for what we need. Same kind of concept as we move forward. So if you have a, a great um, synthetic data tool, I'd rather have own the output of the, the tool versus, um, again, uh, sustaining the tool or whether it's um, EW labeling. Don't want to own, own the tool. I want to be able to own the output, give you data, and then be able to own my own my data, my AI-ready data. All right, uh, let's see. What else do I want to hit on this chart? Um, I think I covered covered all of it. We could um, jump to the next chart. All right, I think we're starting to wind down. All right, so OSD CDAO Alpha 1. Alpha 1 uh, slash AI scaffolding. So you'll hear, hear those terms at the OSD level. So those are um, those are how we are partnered with uh, OSD under those. So as they report up to uh, congressional um, uh, reports, we are lumped under there. Uh, we are actively losing, using the labeling service. So you'll see we already have 1 million pieces of labeled data. Uh, we are starting to tap into their consulting services uh, to get after some playbooks, uh, and implementation uh, strategies for AI. Uh, they're they're investing in um, uh, JTIC, a T and E um, approach, uh, but it's a it's born out of computer vision. It's going to need to scale to support the other uh, sensor modalities. So we're kind of working through what that looks like, um, and then you'll see a series of check marks on on the ones that uh, we have going on and and ones that we are are, are desired. Uh, to get after. So again, cloud storage, compute, those are some cornerstone foundational things. And if uh, at the OSD level, if they can start uh, taking on some of that burden, um, 
we are more than happy to kind of partner with them on that. So again, we're driving a lot of what they plan on providing to the rest of the DOD uh, through this uh, partnership we have with them. All right, we can jump to the next chart. I think that's that's all I have. So again, Colonel Chris Anderson's my 06. So I'm currently the product uh, product manager for Project Linchpin. Um, you're going to see a lot more great things coming out of uh, the Project Linchpin office as we move forward into FY25. Again, fast moving. Just think about it from from the idea. Um, I pitched the idea in summer of 2022. Um, I was in front of the Honorable Douglas Bush going into what we call acquisition shaping panel one on uh, November of 2022. And by November of 2023, I entered into program uh, program status. So again, very, very fast moving. There's still a lot of unknowns, uh, but we're, we're wrapping our strategy around um, AI and implementation for PEO uh, using Project Winspin. All right, I, I will pause there for questions, and I'm not sure the best way to run through the questions, but. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, that was a great presentation. Uh, when I saw the keynote at uh, the CDAO conference earlier this year, I thought this would be a great webinar presentation for CSI Act. And based on the amount of interaction we have in the chat and the Q&A, um, that seems to be so. so um, right now, what I'll do is I'll step through the questions. I'll read them out loud for uh, the people that we have dialed in for the benefit of them. And then we, we'll just go through them that way. Um, so our first question from Glenn says, how can a small nonprofit university become involved? Yep, so that that is part of our ecosystem. So partner through um, Army Research Lab. Um, we have a bunch of academic partners that are part of uh, another enclave that uh, resides within um, our what we call our Hercules enclave on IL-5. Uh, we could get you the contacts um, through the Army Research Lab. That'll be a follow on. I'll get you. I'll get you to the right people, but um, the academic folks are definitely where we want to make sure that we are leveraging so we understand what's, what's coming. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, our next question for Fabio, how can we register for the open door industry engagement? Is there any room for the last Friday of May? So that would be, so if you see Dan Reynolds, I'm going to shout out Dan Reynolds. You could drop his, uh, contact information for Dan. I do this to him all the time. But again, part of um, market research and it's so important uh, that we talk to industry because we just need to understand the state of technology, state of business, state of um, where where we need to be in our strategy. Uh, we do have, we're, we are continuing our open door policy that allows us, um, again, just to interact with, with industry. I do believe May might be filled up, but you hit up Dan, Dan will find a, a spot to, to, to get you into the door. Perfect, thank you. Uh, the next question we have here is, I just wanna make sure we, we get Dan's uh, contact info in the chat. If not, I'll be able to put that in myself. If no problem. Um, next question from Angela. Will this fall under the new modern software development multiple award IDIQ, or are they going to have a separate IDIQ? So I'm not I'm not 100% uh, sure which software IDIQ the person is mentioning, but I I will I will say that this is there's no one contract that is going to get after this. So we are working through with our PEO. Um, leadership, a very broad contracting strategy that leverages trade wins, that leverages Cyber phase three contracts and the fit Cyber process, uh, lever leverages OTAs, as well as um, looking into launching um, IDIQs for kind of the various services. So those are all on the table and believe it or not, those are all in play in some way shape or form or another, whether 
there's I'm, I'm crafting RFIs for some, helping with some, and we are actively working with a trade winds program in other cases to figure out how do we uh, start doing um, uh, doing this through the videos and, and that process. So um, more to follow, and I would say uh, stay stay in touch with with our um, RFI process. I didn't mention so the SIBRS, right? Open topics, X Tech um, scalable. We've been dropping uh, topics in there. There's open topics that are related to Project Lynchpin. We are looking for um, investment in those areas. We are constantly putting things out um, on uh, either social media and my LinkedIn account or the PEO's account. So uh, stay plugged in there for continued. Um, insights into our contracting, multiple contracting approaches. Over. Okay, our next question from Hallie. Do you find any consistent roadblocks in getting industry partners compliant and meeting DOD standards when it comes to cybersecurity? The main concern is trying to move rapidly when something like DOD cybersecurity standards can be a lengthy process. So oh, that's, a, that's a tough one. So from a software, from, from a software perspective, oh man, yes, we've we've been challenged from a software perspective to ensure industry understands some of the cyber constraints. In addition to so we, we so there's the RMF, right? So we often risk management framework. We often actually don't apply risk management appropriately. Sometimes, and this is just my opinion being in seeing how we've been doing this for a while. So risk management is about managing risk, not complying to every single control um, that's, that's required. So sometimes we're overly rigorous on some of the controls that we need to put in place and, and don't really take the true, um, true um, you know, thought for risk management. Uh, and then on top of it, I think industry as they're kind of innovating, they're taking more risk. Um, we are trying to communicate a little bit better some of those um, some of those concerns that we have from a cyber perspective ahead of before they start making some investments in certain certain tools. So, not a great answer for like is industry doing a little bit better for from a cyber perspective. But I think we are getting a little bit better from a software side of the house. Especially with the, the uh, software bill of materials that that's helping. There's a lot of controversy around that when it first launched, but I think they're starting to rally around that. Uh, so the S bomb has, has helped, um, and then now as we separate AI from from software, um, there are the industry. I'll tell you, industry did not understand what we were talking about about data poisons and unbiased data and all that until maybe the last 12, 12 months or so, they are starting to understand the importance of um, uh, of being able to have some basic hygiene on where did this model come from? Where, who generated this first pre-trained model before I enter it into my environment? How do you know that uh, it didn't con doesn't contain any uh, poor frameworks or something that will one day classify a, um, a tank as a school bus or whatever it is. So we we are we are working through that with industry now. They are starting to understand it. Originally we called it an AI bill of materials, but we backed off a little bit and, and now it's more of an AI layer defense uh, defend AI uh, approach um, at, a, at securing uh, securing AI a little bit more. So I'll, I'll pause there. Hopefully that helped. Thank you. Uh, next question from Oscar. Is there a current list of approved products for this platform and maybe products under review as well? Approved approved products. Uh, I would say there's um, no approved products uh, per se. Uh, we are kind of in the market research phase. Um, we are working with our customers to identify AI use cases. So we're collecting them across uh, our PEO, and those use cases are helping us determine what are the right products and investments we need to make um, 
starting in um, starting now and in, into FY25, we haven't really made any major procurements or product decisions yet, um, but we are um, starting to uh, figure out what that looks like. And then on top of it, the, the contract parts of, of all that are all, all, all aligning, and we should um, – we should be doing a little bit better as we move forward. Over. Next question, also from Oscar. Are you open to working with startups and are you able to provide product enhancement requirements? Yep, I think we, we're we trying to tap into that startup mentality. So you can think of project management as being a startup within the government. So we have a very aggressive um, uh, thought process and mentality and if you're a startup and you want to bring it we we will bring you we will bring it to you but if you fail you you know you you will fail <laughs> so we're we're not uh we are actively looking to partner as much as possible and we we want to leverage that that startup mentality that uh wants to really change and get after things so yes i encourage you to get on the calendar and, and start having these discussions over Next question from David. How are developmental and operational test activities slash organizations integrated into project linchpin? From um, operational, um, developmental, both, uh, we're working through our test and evaluation plan, and that's going to be signed off by our Army test and evaluation community at the uh, general officer SES level. So we're having those uh, discussions now. Um, and we're working through um, what that looks like. So right now, the strategy uh, would be very unlike software, unlike anything that you've seen officially before. We are, um, we are convincing the community that AI doesn't need to have an operational test. It's an enabler. We got to make sure that uh, it's safe, secure, reliable, trustworthy, um, but it's not don't chase performance because performance is going to um, – be really in the eye of the beholder, and it, there's a lot of other things that have to happen around it. Uh, so just make sure that the AI is safe, reliable, trustworthy, uh, and then we will make um, we will update that that AI uh, according to kind of user feedback. But we want to be able to decouple it from software so we could provide more more of a rapid uh, rapid update as, as we move forward. So we'll we'll see. Uh, right now, uh, the, the t and &E plan hasn't been signed, but um, it, it is something that uh, within the next two, three months will need to be signed to support our execution going into FY25. So, again, those are um, all things that are being discussed uh, right now with the operational test community uh, as well as um, our, our developmental test uh, strategies. Over. Great. Our next question from Will. Will the linchpin team be at Army Technical Exchange meeting 12 this week? Normally, uh, yes, I, I will be there personally. Uh, normally, we've done speed dating uh, at uh, almost every single TEM, and we've had engagements. Uh, but right now, uh, I, the team is more focused on um, getting the, the program over the finish line in terms of just trying to work through what are we planning on doing in FY25 as part of our execution phase? So they're head down, um, but I'll be um, I'll be there with our our senior leaders, um, uh, meeting with um, meeting with folks and, and chatting. So yep, I'll be there. Over. Next question from Lawrence. During the presentation, there has been mention of preferred ontologies. Which specific ones are these preferred ontologies, and specifically what ontologies? Are in the are in use on the cyber domain portion of the project. So ontology for uh, I'll say for for labeling right now we're aligning to uh, the Dico Jico ontology uh, that's um, been mainly adopted for for imagery and other modalities. Uh, we're kind of, we're working through. Agreements on on some some of the other uh, spectrum, but um, we are starting with the the Dico Jico uh, technology or um, ontologies for you know um, 
identifying things, um, calling things certain objects um, in the imagery and spectrum a certain name. So uh, I will pause there to see if appropriate that answers. Our uh, next question from Will, uh, what sensor modality is Lynchpin currently focused on with the CDAO Alpha 1 labeling effort? So right now it is imagery and it is uh, what we call horizontal full motion video. So think tank on tank uh, action. So it's uh, EOIR um, imagery, uh, horizontal uh, ground, more ground, uh, but we are uh, expanding that to other uh, imagery modalities, um, whether it's SAR and, and a few others. And then um, on top of it, um, we are going to be launching some SBIRs related to EW and kind of labeling and other um, other services there. Over. All right. Uh, next question uh, from Dr. Rim. I believe this may have been answered, but uh, I'll read it out loud just um, for completeness. Uh, how does an AI-focused small business get involved with Project Lynchpin? Uh, I would say definitely if um, you have, if you are a small business and you have not been part of our um, robust market research process, whether responding to any of the RFIs or, or the Cyber and announcements. Um, I would say just uh, get with Dan Dan Reynolds. Uh, we want to tap into the small business community uh, as uh, maximum extent possible. Over. All right. Uh, next question from Alexander: Does Lynchpin provide funding and/or transition support for Phase Three follow-on cybers that start at the DevCom level? Is there a tech integration POC or brief relevant uh, for cyber efforts to join the Lynchpin portfolio? That's that's the plan. So right now, do I have funding for phase three um, oh, uh, contracts? In FY24, no. I, I'm goal is to have some in 25, but really in 26, 27, you'll see you'll start seeing a little bit more money aligned to phase three contracts as well as trade wins as well as uh, all the other uh, contracts that i mentioned um, and yes uh, if, if it's a if your cyber topic is related to one of our ai use cases that's been identified by a customer uh, and a operational user um, those are all things that we help um, as part of that process to get it um, uh, to get it to that to the customer so uh, Long story short, yeah, and I would say um, reach out to Dan Reynolds. If you're a government person looking for a POC, um, still reach out to Dan Reynolds. Uh, he will he will point you to our uh, technical director and our cyber integrator. Um, yes, yeah, we got a cyber integrator because uh, if I didn't mention, I probably didn't. I apologize. So the, S the Army SBIR office is kind of directing a, a large part of their funded portfolio towards project management. So we are providing them with um, high priority uh, use cases, as well as, um, you know, just, again, areas where we need help. Uh, as part of that, um, I uh, I need a couple of dedicated cyber folks to kind of manage the process. So those are government folks that um, you need to engage with uh, as part of uh, the cyber POC part. Over. Uh, next question from Margie, uh, one of the DODI at Field Advisors. Is your team available to give a 15 minute version of your brief to the US Indo PACOM ST board? Uh, they meet via Teams Wednesdays at 2100. I think we can make that work. Of course, we can, we can make that work. 15, 30 minutes. Um, we just have to work out uh, who, but um, in. Reach out to Dan Reynolds and we'll start the planning. Perfect, thank you. And just for um, for the person that uh, mentioned that, so I've personally been out to 
um, Mr. Pack, uh, twice in the last uh, 90 days. Uh, we are actively working pilots with them. Um, so, and they're really high priority Department of the Army G2 um, level supported pilots. Again, we're in the planning phase. If if uh, Indo Paycom um, wants to fall in or has similar things, or it could be could be just tying uh, the two together because uh, USERPAC is supporting the Indo Paycom region. So, um, that's more for situational awareness, but uh, happy to continue the dialogue with uh, the Indo Paycom team. Uh, next question from Jonathan. Is there or will be cross service collaboration, uh, Air Force, Navy within this AI program of record? I would say uh, that one's that one's um, TBD. Well, we'll, we'll see how the Army kind of uh, works through. Uh, personally, I've been talking to um, the Air Force and the Navy uh, on what they have going on. Um, there are pockets of excellence happening across um, all of the services, but there's not a, a cohesive strategy um, uh, getting after scaling AI. Uh, so so we're, we're helping them where we can. Um, will there be cross-service? Uh, I think they're from a data, from a standards perspective, I think that, that's, um, that's a given. Uh, does it go beyond more than that? Uh, I think that's, um, that's a TBD. Over. All right, next question from Patrick. Is this part of the OSD replicator effort? So indirectly, indirectly, I would say yes, directly no. Um, uh, indirectly meaning we, we both, the replicator program and CDAO, we are actually in the same enclave or in the same uh, IL-5 environment. Uh, I had a I know that team pretty well, and uh, what we're trying to do within our IL-5 environment as they onboard replicator program and capabilities, uh, we are trying to figure out how do I, how do we get access to that data uh, so it's not just, again, so piped into a CDAO enclave uh, doing replicator things, but if, if that data, if that autonomous data is, is available, then we can get access to it and then uh, tap into a, a different set of uh, companies and techniques to to get after it. So, uh, just again uh, through partnerships and through through friendships that we've we've made, uh, we are tied into uh, Replicator, but officially, uh, not not yet. Over. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question from Oscar: Are you working with anyone at U.S. Cyber Command or any of the cyber service components? We are uh, uh, sadly we are a little bit behind on uh, on that just uh, where we're at with the program, uh, but they are um, uh, a huge uh, they're a huge partner with PEO IEWNF uh, in general. Um, so our goal is to be able to uh, do a little bit better job as uh, we we catch our breath a little bit as part of our part of our planning phase. Um, so long story short, uh, we we do need to do a little bit better job and it's been recognized. My leadership has kind of brought it up as we need to get the cyber community uh, better involved. So that is on our absolutely to do list. And again, going back to our um, electronic warfare and cyber uh, PM, who, who does our most main interface with that uh, community. We've started to talk to them about uh, use cases. We're actually preparing a, a, another RFI uh, for them specifically, uh, in support of some of the things that they want to get after. Over. Somewhat of a follow-up question, also from Barbara. Are you working with any anyone at Air Force Research Lab? Are you working with any of the Air Force Research Lab programs? Air Force Research Lab programs, I would say yes. Yeah. So um, Red Force is. Uh, is a is a growing partnership uh, out of Rome. Uh, so we're we're looking at uh, how do we tap into some of the things that they've been doing. So the lead there, Morgan Bishop, and team um, have been. Uh, he and I have been in the same circles, right? My my AI journey started when 
uh, Project Maven, otherwise uh, really the, the, the name was Algorithmic Worker Cross-Functional Team, it stood up in 2017. I was the Army's lead um, for deploying AI into operations. Again, I, I saw how hard it was. Morgan was on the Air Force side um, doing the same thing. Uh, and again, my, my AI journey led to me putting a business uh, strategy together called Project Linchpin to, to get after it because just understanding that we all can't do it, do it alone. All these program managers can't all of a sudden have the AI expertise and the infrastructure and the computing standards ready to go. Uh, Morgan's been doing the same. Um, so we are going to join forces as uh, much as possible to figure out how do we leverage each other's um, experience, expertise, uh, moving forward. And then on top of it, I think uh, there's the AppWorks um, uh, process uh, that we are also um, being after. So going back to kind of AI bill of materials and adversarial things, there's a couple of topics that uh, that they've uh, that they have ongoing that they've asked uh, us to kind of partner and sponsor, and it makes sense because we're we're interested in the same kind of thing. But beyond beyond those, I think. I think there's a couple of other touch points, but beyond those, uh, if, if you have any feedback on where we should be engaging, uh, I'm happy to hear that as well. Over. Great. Our next question, how will Project Lynchpin projects interface with civilian agencies such as HHS and EPA that may benefit from sensor technologies? Oh man, right now I think that might be a little out of scope in terms of um, we are supporting sensor programs, but we are not a sensor program itself. So I think civilian agencies that are interested in sensor technology would still have to kind of work through the normal process. So now if there's um, an AI that they want to kind of build for a specific sensor, we could see that in the future, but right now that's um, currently out of scope uh, as part of the, the, the strategy. Over. Next question from Stuart. In Project Lynchpin, are you capturing challenges, lessons, solutions, and do you plan to share those with other programs? Yeah, so I, I would have loved to say no, no, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to scroll away and not tell anybody. Uh, so. Yes, our goal is to be able to share those lessons learned. I think um, we are we are right now. As, uh, I kind of mentioned what we we're doing with pilots and prototyping. Some are in planning phase. Some we 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 are executing some. And when I mention um, some of these, we are we have stumbled. We have stumbled, and we are like, man, this policy needs to be updated. Holy crap! How do we actually deploy into this um, hardware? Uh, deployment environment. Uh, somebody needs to make sure that there's enough GPUs to do this next time. Uh, so we are we are stumbling and we are learning a lot. And then we are trying to provide that feedback to our Army senior leaders, whether it's a, here's the, hey, Army CIO, you own, you own this piece of the pie or puzzle. We need to do better with accreditation or cyber or whatever it is, or data. And then it's like, hey, salt, we need to do a better job of X, Y, and Z. Um, ATEC, uh, don't over test it because testing is um, <laughs> rigorous testing is probably not the way we want to go. So we are, as we are learning and failing with these pilots, our goal is to, to share that. Now, now we are learning. Does that mean when we share these information, everyone else is learning the same thing? That's a that's a more of a struggle that uh, we are we are seeing, uh, and we are trying to help. Um, advocate to ensure that we don't create policies uh, in place that actually put more roadblocks than uh, than help because we want to get these technologies it's being used everybody's using them on a daily basis today we want to get these technologies in there but we can't uh, we can't have these same policies in place and rules and regulations or else we'll just never get there uh, so again long story short yes we want to be able to uh, inform lessons learned. Are we sharing in what programs? Uh, we are um, uh, the maximum we can. Robert. 
Thank you. Uh, we have a couple more questions in the chat, but I do want to respect your time. So um, if you do have to go, let me know. We can address some of these offline, but I'll just keep going until uh, until you raise your hand and, and say when. Uh, our next question from Stephen, he says, as we continue to host LLMs and SLM models for some of the partner orgs you've referenced, how would you suggest we continue to integrate our pipeline to support your mission? Oof, okay, so um, I might need help on that in terms of, uh, are you a government organization and pipeline or not 100% sure, but here's um, LLM in general. Okay, so I'll start with large language models. Um, there's a lot of them out there. There's, I don't know, last time I looked, 50, 60 different type of models. Some models are general. Some models are really good at document exploitation or summarization. Some some are good at financial things. So all these, one, we have to be able to be smarter on, on are we doing large language models or are we doing more small language models that are tailored to specific use cases um, that take into account how much compute or is actually required to do inference, and then of course how much compute is required to actually tune and tune in, um, tune these models to make sure that they work. Um, yeah, we we're looking at RAG RAG services. We're looking at frameworks to make sure that um, we could have a large language models, and then um, maybe uh, there's different uh, vectors that point to documents for certain things. But all that is uh, things that we're kind of working through. But one of our big concerns right now is just um, we want to be able to ensure that we have enough t and &E and b and in place to understand what are we trying to get after. Are we going to be putting an LLM that could provide hallucinations to somebody that's writing an Intel report that decides to take the, the full account of the, of the recommendation and put something in there that possibly could have been 30% accurate. Because again, these LLMs um, right now, they'll give you an answer even even though, you know, it might not be the right answer. Um, so uh, trying to figure out how to do that best is a little bit more important than just trying to put it, put an LLM into operation. Um, hopefully that, um, hopefully that helps. But Again, long story short, you could see a lot of different types of LLM or or small language models that are focused on specific uh, things across um, the different um, domains, meaning um, red, yellow, uh, red, green, yellow. Over. Thank you. Our next question from Jeff: Does Project Lim Linchpin include a focus on secure operational technologies and manufacturing of autonomous systems, such as robots, UAVs, et cetera. Oh man, I'm not sure how to answer that. I think um, uh, manufacturing is out of scope. Okay, all right. So we want to make sure that AI is secure at the point of deployment so we could avoid to the maximum extent possible from uh, bad data getting into the operational kind of use case. Um, but we are we are not necessarily in the manufacturing, making sure that um, the manufacturing board, hey man, that could be a use case that I'm just not aware of and thinking about, but right now we're not, we're not focused on that area. Over. All right, our next question, can major program milestones be shared with DOD contractors? So oh, can you say that one more time? Sure. Uh, can major program milestones be shared with DOD contractors? Oh, okay, so uh, major DOD contractors, I think uh, the biggest milestones that we can share, so software, we entered the software planning phase November, um, 2022. Our goal is to enter into the execution phase um, no later than November 2024. I'm sorry. So planning phase was November 2023. Um, execution phase 
November 2024. Um, execution phase uh, is really going to be focused on uh, scoping um, pilots and achieving and uh, meeting AI uh, needs for, uh, I think, three or four different programs. I know Titan's on one of them. Um, XM30 is probably another. There's probably two or other, two, two or three other programs that we're going to uh, support. Now, all of those will also be associated with different types of contract opportunities. So I think in FY25, you're going to see by at least um, second or third quarter, you're going to see uh, some contract opportunities uh, to get after those various uh, customer uh, programs. Um, we're also uh, working through our software ICD, which is our foundational requirements document, and that'll be signed um, again by uh, by this by this November. Uh, beyond beyond that, I think um, uh, stay tuned for um, other big news through our normal SAM.gov postings, and just uh, continue um, uh, paying uh, Dan Reynolds uh, every day, 24 hours a day. Send him an email or a text. And he'll keep you uh, in, on our uh, industry Rolodex uh, updated to send you information. Over. Perfect. Our uh, next question from Dennis. How does this relate to the Army's AI Integration Center, AI2C? Yeah, Army's uh, AI Integration Center, formerly known as AI Task Force, um, they, ch they changed uh, strategies. Uh, couple of years ago, so they're physically helping us now. They're uh, on the staff, they, uh, along with their green suit community that's helping us uh, with some basic things. They, they have um, the Carnegie Mellon, um, the software engineering integration, uh, FFRDC offshoot that's been helping us with uh, standards and some market research and, and some feedback. So they're, uh, they're part of the team. They're going to work on 616263 research ideas, they're going to inform uh, our strategy, and in some cases where we can, we'll, um, we'll implement uh, some of those as, as part of it, but uh, I would consider them a strong partner. Um, I was there about uh, about three, four weeks ago talking to uh, one of my good friends, Colonel Isaac Faber, as uh, we were uh, figuring out AI world domination and making sure that uh, the Army um, has a solid strategy moving forward. Over. And the follow-up question from Dennis, will Project Linchpin be layered into existing cloud environments? Yes, uh, that's, um, that is the goal. So existing cloud environments, um, you know, which one, uh, multi-cloud? Yes, uh, the short answer is yes, but it's so much more complicated than that. So right now some, some uh, some cloud they're they're fully cloud they have no on prem um, some some think that's fine uh, but as uh, we look at ex actually experimenting uh, maybe maybe hybrid is a way to go because there are some techniques out there I, before I try and train on the cloud I want to make sure it's even worth um, going uh, beyond the three four month mark of of this so. There's definitely things that I want to be able to experiment with before uh, I do that. So we are going to be working with our cloud providers um, as part of the uh, the C2E uh, kind of follow on. Um, but then how much we do in the cloud versus how much we do on prem depends on the use case. And uh, we are um, looking at all that in addition to some of the partnerships that I mentioned. So the Army Research Lab manages the high performance community computing center for the Department of Defense. There's one HPC that's sitting out at the Aberdeen Proving Ground. So we're working through the HPC, work with the HPC team, how, can we, how much can we leverage in that environment to do our uh, computing and training. Um, again, those are some of the stumbling uh, learning objectives. Uh, we use that actually environment for one of our um, operational pilots. Uh, and we learned uh, some of the limitations there, and we are working with that team to make some uh, improvements to, so it, it could uh, kind of meet our, our needs. Again, I'm sorry. I, I ramble. I like to talk, um, but I just I want to give the community 
a good idea of where we're at and where we're going uh, and, a, and some confidence that we actually know what we're doing. So um, long story short, yeah, uh, we are going to be leveraging cloud environments uh, layered into our uh, current um, uh, La, our, our current um, cloud providers, we want to leverage um, and build out our on-premise com compute on top of it. All right, last thing on this. So you had executive order, uh, executive order, I uh, forgot the name, but Joe, uh, uh, President Biden signed it out last year. If you read it, it had to, it was more aligned to the civil community and making sure that um, there's enough T and E in there that uh, and people understand the risk of um, making hiring decisions off of AI or you know gender stuff. Uh, but there was a section in there that talked about big cloud providers not um, uh, dis disenfranchising the small businesses because what do these big cloud providers do? There's a lot of data. They want all of our data and they want to use their uh, services to get after it. But that's not my strategy. My strategy is to leverage their storage, compute services to the maximum extent possible. But if I don't have to use their training tools and 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 TV things, if I could bring in my own, that is what I'm going to do. And I'm looking for the best partners across the cloud providers to get after more of that approach um, and that concept. Over. Thank you for the thorough response. Uh, our last question comes from Gunner. What would the steps be to schedule a partner collaboration meeting between Lynchpin and a software operations branch under AFRLB? Oh man, I would say definitely at about 11.59 p.m. start calling Dan Reynolds and then don't stop until about uh, 4.30 a.m. But all kidding aside, uh, yeah, just just hit up uh, Dan Reynolds, and we'll do our best to um, collaborate. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation, and uh, thank you for the spirited Q and A. That's probably one of the the longer Q and A sessions we have for a CSI webinar, which I think is a great thing. Uh, thank you for everybody for staying on the line. Um, I know we had a couple adjustments, and we changed the time and things like that. Um, you know, most importantly, thanks to, to Dan and Drew and Barat, you know, running from the Pentagon uh, to get this presentation on. Please check back to the CSI website. Uh, those slides are available now. Um, within a day or two, we'll make sure we have the recording up as well. If you have follow up questions for the presenter, um, you can reach out to Dan Reynolds, who's kind of the main POC over at the PAO. Um, if not, you can reach out to CSI and we'll, you know, we'll put you in contact. Um, but this was a great presentation. Uh, hopefully, we see you all. Uh, next month for the next CSI webinar, uh, which is uh, focused on uh, post-quantum. Thank you.